What is going on everyone? This is Jacob Amaral here. In today's video, we're gonna be coding our own support and resistance indicator using very simple techniques. And if you guys are interested, we'll actually make future updates to this indicator, maybe adding some machine learning to make it a little bit better. So in this video, we're gonna be coding a support and resistance indicator. I'm gonna show you some trades, and then I'm gonna show you the actual backend code of how the indicator works, and you guys can use it for yourselves. Support and resistance is a common term when it comes to traders in regards to determining levels at which an asset is going to react, okay? So you have two main plots, if you will, support and resistance. Usually support is on the buy side, and basically it's a level in which the asset will typically bounce off using previous lows, okay? This doesn't always happen. Sometimes an asset prices can easily destroy, hey, go, go below a support very easily based on other market dynamics, but it's one sort of indicator or term when it comes to a buy area for an asset. And then you have the second part, which is resistance. And this is a level in which the asset will bounce below. It will maybe touch sort of like a ceiling, either bounce below or break through. And there's no real way to forecast that. Generally, you use support and resistance in addition to, say, market dynamics um, and, and, and pair it with uh, where do we think the market's going to go and use support and resistance to maybe get an entry at a better price, maybe short at a higher uh, entry price to be in your favor. But support and resistance is a very common term when it comes to traders, and it helps you get essentially into better trades, better prices in terms of your entry price, okay? So let's hop into the code for the indicator for support and resistance, and then I'm gonna show you a real world application of actual buys and sells using uh, support and resistance. Okay, so I wanted to go over the code of how we calculate the support and resistance, and it's, it's very, very simple. It's not super complex. I didn't want to kind of go into deep with how you can calculate it because there's multiple ways you can do it and a lot of additions you can add onto it, including machine learning and more complex calculations. And maybe we'll make a separate video for that. But here we have our on bar update function. This is in C sharp, by the way, in the NinjaTrader platform. So what we have is a, basically an if statement saying for resistance, which is generally the ceiling, the, the, the top level of where an asset might bounce off of. If the highest bar and we pass in the high, which is a, a an array or a list of high prices, and our look back bars, which is an input. So the, you can input this as a variable. Say you wanted to look at the last five bars or 10 bars to calculate your support or your resistance, um, we would use this input. If the highest bar um, in that period is equal to um, our look back bars, then we're gonna set a new resistance, right? So if there's a new high that's happened, um, we want to update our resistance um, price, okay? So resistance at zero is, is basically the current resistance price. Um, it's, it's, a, it's an array as well, and zero is the current price, right? And um, if you wanted to get the, the last resistance or two bars ago resistance, you would use one or two respectively. Here we update the resistance um, to the latest high, uh, or sorry, to the high on the look back bars, okay? And then else, basically, if there's no update, if, if the highest bar is not equal to our current bar, then we keep resistance the same. We set it to the previous resistance, okay? So there may be periods of time where the resistance doesn't change because there's no new highs made, okay? And then for support, the only difference is we're using lows. So we're finding the lowest bar um, in a period of time, and we're updating that support to that low price, okay, in that range. Um, else, if there's no new low, then we just... Um, set it to the previous support. And that way you get like sort of a support line. Uh, if we didn't do this, then there'd just be dots. So this is a very simple example in C sharp. Um, now say you're watching this and you've maybe built your own system. You're not using a third party. You're not using Ninja Trader um, or, or TradeStation or, or MetaTrader and you're building your own. Obviously this would be a lot more work on your end, right? Um, what you would have to do first, you'd have to obviously have some type of function that either a loop or a function that um, is updated when you get new price data. Um, and or you, you do an historical loop and you, you do a for loop through those prices. And basically, you'd have to build your own highest bar function, right, um, where you take a, um, a period of, of prices, and you find the highest high using some type of maximum function, um, or just, you know, you know, storing a variable and, and comparing the highs. 
and be able to save that bar, either save the bar value, the the, the time that the bar happened, be able to save it to, to reference it in the future. Um, and then once you're able to do that, you're able to set a resistance price and, and you do the same for the support price. Um, one of the main benefits of using third party systems um, like NinjaTrader, TradeStation, MetaTrader, all of those is you're able to develop stuff faster, right? And um, there's pros and cons to it. I've said it in many of my videos, uh, but to keep it short, you know, the pros, it's faster. You're able to generate strategies faster and, and, and um, potentially make alpha, make returns quicker. Um, the cons is there's obviously customizability um, issues, right? Uh, a lot of these third-party software systems have limits. And if those limits bother you, then you have to look elsewhere. So anyways, um, you know, Ninja Traders, you know, supplies a lot of these documentations and functions already. So it's very easy to, to build. Um, so anyways, here's, that's a simple indicator. Let's chart it out on a um, chart here. We actually already have it. Let me just reset it. Cause I don't know if this is the updated code. Um, and then we'll talk about improvements and this actually in action. Okay. So let's set our look back bars to four. Okay. So let's look at the chart here. Um, we can see that. So what you're seeing is the, uh, sort of the orange red is the resistance and the green is obviously the support. Okay. So we can see when we make new lows, the green, um, value, the support is updated. So right here we had a low, um, at, it's probably using the low of this price to set the support and the resistance is the sort of the recent high, uh, which would be around here. Okay. So it is obviously a lagging indicator because it's using previous price data. And in the improvements, we'll talk about forecasting support resistance, but here you have a basic understanding of, of when these values um, are updated and charted. Now, periods of time, which can be weird is here where an asset price is continuously to, con continuing to rise and the resistance is not updated because it's just making new highs, right? And if it keeps making new highs, then, um, you know, it's, it's not going to be updated because, you know, we don't have, we don't know where the resistance could go. Okay. And a better solution to this would be forecasting it. Um, and I don't, I'm not sure how we would forecast that, but there's definitely a formula or, um, a solution we could, could look at for sure. Um, but anyways, here, sorry, what you're seeing on the chart is, is NASDAQ futures and, um, you know, basically our own support and resistance indicator. It's definitely not perfect, but it's a great start. And, um, you know, some, some great use cases would be, um, obviously if you think an asset is going to continue to going up, you could have a system that maybe buys, um, when the, you know, close price crosses below a support, um, or is equal to it, um, and maybe sell at resistance or have a profit target and stop loss. When you think an asset's going to go down, um, you could, you know, short, go, go bet that the, the asset's going to go down if it touches resistance and, um, you know, have a profit target and stop loss, that sort of stuff. Um, those would be, um, you know, great options. Obviously the hard part is, you know, when do we think is the asset's going to go up or down? Um, you know, that's a tough call. So anyways, here, um, I'm going to show you some actual buy and sell signals, um, with the support and resistance indicator. Once again, this is in, in Ninja trader and part of, um, our strat gen product where you can build strategies without writing any code. And we have the support resistance indicator built in. Uh, so if you're interested in checking that out, if you want to generate strategies with no code, uh, be able to back test them, run them live or run them in a simulated account, uh, check out strat gen. The link will be in the description below. Um, great way to get into trading without uh, having to code and to build strategies pretty quickly. So here, uh, what we have is, um, S and P 500 futures. And basically we're going to buy if the close price crosses below the support line. So you can see a buy signal is, um, generated when, um, the close price crosses below the, the, um, the support line. And then we just have a two point uh, profit target. Okay. So, you know, what this, this support resistance, um, theory indicator, if you will, won't obviously work all the time and, and no indicator does no, no system works all the time. It's a matter of use this to get a better entry price, but have some type of logical decision on, um, what the market's going to do, being able to, um, you know, somehow forecast that it's going to go up in the next, whatever horizon your horizon is the next day, next month, the next year sort of thing. Um, and applying that support and resistance to, to handle your, your entry signals, whether that's long or short or both. Right. Um, so definitely, um, a great way to 
get into a better price, a better entry price if you're using support instead of just buying uh, when you think it's going to go up, maybe waiting for a dip in the market and getting that on that bounce. But um, this is support and resistance. I'm going to post my code for the indicator below because it's very, very simple. But let's talk improvements because I know you're probably interested in that. How can we improve this? So the, the biggest improvement I think we can make is, is forecasting instead of using previous price data to calculate um, our support and resistance, you know, just looking at previous highs and lows, it's a great start, but being able to forecast um, with some type of accuracy um, where it's going to go next, where the support's going to go next and have it more of a forward indicator, if you will. I don't know if this will increase the performance of, you know, the system, for example, it, it sounds cooler, but it might actually, it might not actually increase, you know, the performance. When I say performance, I mean, like, obviously, profit, uh, net profit, drawdown, that sort of stuff in a system. But it, it, I think it's an improvement either way, because we're challenging ourselves to um, be a bit more forward thinking, if you will, uh, with this system. So I think um, I'll probably make a separate video on that on on maybe some type of machine learning model where we can start forecasting support and resistance and and using um, different terminologies and, and different calculations instead of just previous highs and lows. One thing I want to show you guys, something that I was looking at is um, one way, so, like in, in a way, um, we're sort of using this system. Um, let me show you here. Okay, so... Basically, there's a when you have a time series, right? There's a way of, of calculating local maximums and minimums. Okay, so say we have a chart here, and um, you know it's a time series where you have a price over a period of time, and there's there's highs, there's recent highs, recent lows, and then kind of global highs and lows, right? And and this is a system we could potentially used to improve our support and resistance indicator is looking at what's called local minimas and maximas. Now, in a way we are because we are, um, we are only getting highs on a recent period. It's not all time highs for the last 20 years or lows. That wouldn't make any sense because you never get entries. Um, but in a way we are already doing this because of um, the ability to store our prices in an array and only looking at the last period. So um, in a way, we are doing this, but I think there is other calculations, other formulas we can use to to calculate it. Maybe we have global maximums and minimums and then locals as well um, as two separate levels. So that's one way we can improve it. And then obviously, it's being able to forecast what we think the support and resistance is going to be based off of previous um, data, if you will. So Two ways we can improve the, the support and resistance indicator. I think we'll make a separate video on that because um, I wanted to show you guys a simple example. I know not all of you are, you know, intermediate or expert coders or mathematicians, um, and I didn't want to um, overwhelm you guys. And, and personally, I have to do some research and learn myself before making a video, so it's right and it makes sense. Um, so anyways, that'll be a future video improving on this, but this is the support and resistance, how to calculate it and how to use it in an exact system. Um, if I were to use this in the strategy, in a strategy, I would definitely like, for example, let's let's take a, a very um, common example. So if we looked at a commodity that, you know, is sort of sideways, like gold, um, I think having a strategy where you go long on support cross and, and short on resistance cross um, or, or exiting or switching sides, whatever it might be, I think it could perform really well. Um, obviously, you'd have to back test it and see if it performs out of sample and probably tweak it um, quite a bit to get it exactly how it works. But that, you know, very specific example, I think could do pretty well um, because of, of how gold works. But obviously, if you were to do that with, say, um, the S&P 500, it might only work in very small scenarios, very small time frames when it's very sideways. Uh, and, and you need a system to forecast that and, and be you know, pretty confident that it's going to happen. So if you guys could think of other scenarios where you could use support and resistance, let me know in the comments below. Um, and what you think about, you know, us reviewing the code and reviewing it in a system. If you guys, if you like this sort of format, because I want to keep kind of doing this in future videos and really go in depth with how these systems work. So anyways, that's the video guys, um, support and resistance. We're going to improve it in separate videos, but uh, that's all I got. And we'll see you next week.
Have a good one. Bye.